On today's episode of Anime Afterthought, Made in Abyss, Season 2, Episode 6, The Luring. It's undeniable that since the beginning of this season, we've been standing on this precipice that right over the horizon, something epic, epically horrific, but truly epic nonetheless, is about to transpire. From arriving at the Golden City, to the introduction of the Suicide Squad Ganja, to the mysteries surrounding the origins of the Narihata village, Iriboru. They have been building the anticipation for weeks, enticing us with promises of the accursed. And now, once we've finally found the one person who can tell us the truth of Iriboru, they blindside us with an action-packed episode. Bravo, Maiden Abyss, you know what the fuck you're doing. I dub this one the Hook and Haymaker, the one-two combo setting us up to get knocked the fuck out. Of course, this is only successful if today's episode plays its part, and boy, how he did it. This is honestly one of the best episodes I have seen. I mean, Obviously, Maiden Abyss centers around the discovery of the Abyss, and what, truth be told, horrors lie in wait for our main characters. One could say that Maiden Abyss is the embodiment, the, the perseverance of will itself. To wit, doesn't necessarily mean action, but when the story calls for it, my god, do they do it so well. Season 1, I fucking loved the orb piercer. The movie, although it was such a fucking heartbreaker, I mean, that climactic fight with Bond Drood, oh, was a fucking match. Masterpiece, And now we have the luring. Although it was a mere side note in last week's episode, the prospect of the luring was just as interesting as the balancing. I mean, Iriboro is such an oddity, even in regards to the abyss itself. So I was actually shocked when I found out the luring served an actual function in terms of the village. With the inhabitants trapped within its barrier, the question did come to mind, how exactly do they eat? Where does the food come from? from. Well, if Iriboro can't go to the food, bring the food to Iriboro. And that's exactly what the inhabitants have done. Not only does this provide a means to sustenance, but as Waizukine inferred, it's kind of a festival, a, a nice motivator. Of course, this is only successful if you can defeat said creature. So what happens when you lure in a creature that's not only powerful, but is fueled by revenge and has a taste for hollows? You call your heaviest of heavy hitters, which just so happens to consist of jerks Mo, the current third sage, and Rico, the plucky little ass from the surface world. I know, I know, it sounds far-fetched, right? In the same episode where she was about to make the biggest mistake of her adventuring career, she's able to come up with a strategy utilizing Iroboro's value system to defeat this behemoth creature. This coming from the girl who drank poop water just a couple episodes ago, and who was about to give Bailoff her eyes, her legs, or half of her internal organs. I still can't tell if she's smart or not, but let's talk about that indecent proposal. Thank God Magikaja was there to be the voice of reason. Hell, even Nanachi came out of her fucking comatose state to say, that deal seems pretty fucking sus. She was literally willing to do whatever it took, I mean, as long as it didn't hurt, to continue her journey with Nanachi and Midi to the bottom of the abyss. But Magikaja knew the truth. This was a death sentence, not for her life, but for her overall adventure. He had seen it too many times and what I inferred was once you lose a piece of yourself Iriboro has you in its clutches. Giving up on moving on is just a matter of time. So once again I praise him for taking action and in doing so actually led us to the main event. The luring had begun, the monster had proven too much for the inhabitants to handle and it was making its way to the market district where Riku had left something very precious. Now all this time the stonesmith had been whittling away at Prushka, transforming her into a true white whistle. Noticing the shop was in the monster's path of destruction, Riku rushed to save her friend. But alas, she could not save the shopkeeper, and I'm kind of okay with that, because the dude's kind of fucking creepy. I mean, once he finished, he climaxed, like, Dude, yeah, maybe he doesn't know the origins of this stone, but we certainly do, and after shaping the life reverberating crystal of a young chibi child, you fucking busted a nut? I have mixed emotions seeing your ass dissolve, like, eh. Was it sad? I mean, was it really sad? Like, uh, I don't know. There's not enough left in my emotional tank to really care about this dude right now because up next is a kaiju battle. Yes, the echoes of battle have awakened the third sage, Gerarimo. 
I was taught never judge a book by its cover, but when you design a character with a chest anus and a veiny sword, don't be surprised if I stare at it sideways. My god, that thing looks creepy as fuck. But it seems even the power of a sage is not enough to stop this monster. And I mean, we have to. Moogie's livelihood is on the line. What's that? You don't know Moogie? But she served us the best cooked testicles we've ever had. Yes, Octopus Granny, real name Moogie, is leading the militia of other shop owners to stop this monster. And this is where we see Rico devise her plan. Yes, utilizing Iroboro's value system and using her own hair as compensation she's not only able to transform Magikaja into his speed mode, but also garner the necessary equipment to stop this monster. Noticing that the creature flies without the force field, she hypothesizes that the body itself must be lighter than air. To it, a large gust of wind, or in this case, the heat caused by fire Narihata, to push the creature into a wired trap. And once in prisons, the denizens can enact the killing blow. And utilizing a giant mirror in Iroboru, everything goes according to plan. That is until we discover the truth of this creature. In fact, it's more like a hive in which the queen is the center and the outside purplish acid type stuff is actually the male of the species, decides to have one last desperate attack with one of the makeshift tendrils coming straight towards Riku. And I gotta say, once again, Ma is fucking NVP, taking a bullet again. And this is where we get the best scene of the fucking series so far, in my opinion, like seeing the image of Prushka standing behind Riku saying, call, call me, and her blowing into her white whistle, and then a souped up white version of Rag shows up saying, I know exactly what's going, what's happening, I know the feelings. I mean, of course this amazing moment has to be sullied a little bit with the return of Bonjour giving us an explanation of the white whistle, saying the timber brings out the true potential of relics. It's but a small stain in an otherwise perfect sequence. A second blow of the whistle heralds in his next attack, going full force, but not to use his value destructing incinerator to take on the creature in. Before he knows it, battle's over. All that's left is the cleanup and explanation, the latter being handled by Wazukine, informing us about the true nature of this creature, as well as giving us a hint of how to get Nanachi from Bailoff. And it includes a piece of the embodiment of value, Faputa. Can't imagine that's going to go over well. And thus we end this episode with a cliffhanger. Veiko is literally setting the stage for the tale of Iroboro's creation. This was a fucking good episode. My god, I am so ready to figure out what the fuck's going on. I mean, all I have now is wild speculation with no proof, and here comes the fucking proof. I am so excited. And like I said, structurally speaking, this season has been fucking perfect. I mean, they've been building this giant roller coaster of anticipation, and we're just now hearing the final few clickety clacks of it. I mean, I can't be the only one holding my breath on the edge of my seat waiting for that fucking drop. Not to mention, we still have Nanachi to deal with. Like, holy shit. Damn, this was a good episode. But of course, you know what time it is. Well, here we are again. It's time to see how today's episode fares on the cringe meter. Well, there you have it. Today's episode once again gets designated mildly unsettling. I think the action-oriented episode was just what the doctor prescribed to distract us from the overt sexual innuendos and dissolving Muppets. Oh yeah, Prushka, need I say more? But of course, there's always next week, so without further ado, let's go return you to a regularly scheduled program. With one of the greatest secrets this series has to offer so far right around the corner, I am hyped now more than ever. But I have to know, what did you guys think of today's episode? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Do you want some more of it? Well, I do. So with all that being said and more made the best next week, I honestly cannot wait for future episodes.